This is a case of first impression and before the council. Uh, as the council knows, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you were requested to take a look at a different policy for uh, use of downtown rights of way and street closures, uh, street closure permits, and whether or not the council felt that within circum cer certain circumstances uh, in the Main Street downtown business district, that uh, the council would be willing to consider whether to allow alcohol within certain limitations within the public right-of-way uh, pursuant to local uh, community events. So essentially, council reviewed that, issued that ordinance, which is very similar in nature to the ordinance that uh, was reviewed several years ago. Jim Bowling can tell you exactly when. Uh, when the council was uh, asked whether or not uh, they would consider allowing um, beer and wine sales in city parks uh, for community events as well. Uh, at that time, council said they would do that, but they wanted to make sure that they kept uh, full control on behalf of the community of the use of the city's uh, parks, and so uh, allows that pursuant to a resolution of the city council. So each event must come through staff to get permitted and staff brings a report or recommendation to city council and city council then has the ability, has the obligation under the ordinance uh, to pass a specific resolution allowing the event or not allowing the event. And if the council allows the event, then uh, it is allowed within certain parameters that are set out by the resolution. That's exactly the same process that was recommended to the City Council for public rights of way downtown. And so um, that was passed by the City Council and uh, amazingly enough within just a week we received a request for a beer garden to be placed in the public right of way pursuant to a community event. Uh, Pat Greenfield is here on behalf of Bootsers who is the uh, applicant. Uh, committee looked at this a couple of, uh, excuse me, last week. Uh, the application is included in your packet as well as a diagram of the area. Uh, there are a couple pieces to this. One is the street closure permit, uh, which is uh, recommended for approval or denial by uh, the fire department, the street department, and the uh, public works department. Uh, this street closure permit was approved for uh, May 15th from 6 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. Uh, Main Street itself from 3rd to 2nd, um, I believe. 1st, sorry. Off one digit. At any rate, uh, so the street closure permit was the first part. Secondly, um, as part of that street closure, uh, Boosters requested that a uh, community concert be allowed to be held in the right-of-way during that period of time. Um, the community concert, of course, you have a ban, you're going to have noise, so uh, then a noise permit or noise regulations are administered by uh, the chief of police, and David Duke is here for um, any questions the council might have. So um, Chief Duke reviewed that, indicated that his recommendation was that um, he would not allow um, waiver of the uh, noise ordinance after 10 o'clock. So um, the third element that was to be brought forward was uh, the uh, permit or the resolution to allow the beer garden. So that is what is before you tonight. Um, this was looked at by uh, appropriate staff. City clerk looked at it, looked at the uh, configuration. The map that you see in your packet has a specific delineated area, just as the one that we're most familiar with in the city parks is Rendezvous in the Park, which is held uh, every summer in East City Park. And they petitioned for a resolution for a beer and wine garden. And uh, it sets out a specific area. It was at one time uh, a designated uh, serving area and now it, it takes up a lot of the park but it's regulated uh, nonetheless. So the beer and wine regulations for serving have to still be observed so there has to be controls to make sure that um, the beer and wine sales are done in a legal fashion, that age is being uh, ver verified and that uh, the recommendation from the chief of police and is in the resolution is that two police officers are uh, to be utilized by the applicant to maintain security 
uh, to make sure that uh, those rules are being observed. And uh, as this is a case of first impression, as I indicated, um, in order to see how it goes. And that's exactly the same situation that Rendezvous had the first year that they applied. Uh, they were directed that they would have two police officers uh, to assist them in that, in that case. And, of course, these are paid for by the applicant in subsequent years because uh, it turned out, uh, fortunately, that there were no incidents in rendezvous, um, down to one police officer, and then uh, private security was allowed to be utilized. So uh, in the future, perhaps council wants to consider that. But the recommendation for this one is to allow it um, as long as those officers are um, – used to provide security. All of the other alcohol, uh, or excuse me, beer and wine serving uh, laws need to be observed as well. Uh, the term of the um, event has been recommended from 7 o'clock until, excuse yeah, 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock on May 15th. Uh, so it will end about the same time as uh, the band stops playing. The street closure is through 11 o'clock. It'll take probably that much time to clear the right-of-way. So with that, um, staff is bringing this to you. It's not typically uh, staff's place to make a recommendation on something like this, either pro or con. Uh, we make a recommendation that if the council decides that it wants to proceed with it, uh, the recommendations are held within the resolution. The council's action tonight is to, if you decide that um, you wish to grant it, then uh, you need to consider the resolution and um, move to accept the resolution, make any modifications, but the resolution needs to be passed in order that uh, the event can proceed. I will note that it is May 15th, so this resolution will have to be passed at this council meeting in order for that event to take place. As I said, Pat Greenfield is here. If you wish to hear from her, um, you have staff's recommendations on the resolution in your packet. Dan, the administrative committee heard this last Monday. We did, and that's where we came up with the a lot of the recommendations that that we're seeing in here. As, you know, we wanted to, the we agreed with Chief Duke on the uh, the noise ordinance portion, and uh, but this actual street closure portion makes sense for you know set up and tear down. You know, as far mm, as sure. having an hour on either end to, to help with that. So, you know, I I'm okay with. Uh, with approving it as we did, um, we didn't hear from the applicant at that meeting. If I don't know if she wanted to talk tonight about anything. Or Pat, you want to come up? I was out of town for ten days during that, and I sent um, two guys along. But actually, just Pat, please come, Pat, come on. Come on. I sprained my ankle right before I came in. I'm going to be out. Okay. Okay. Give you a piggyback right up here. Can you help? I'm kidding. I have ice water. Yeah, you did. There were two representatives that were here, and they and they said that they would. Those representatives did say. That they thought that Miss Pat would agree with the, <laughs> with the uh, our recommendations and, and hold to it. Walter, because because Pat's voice isn't amplified, she indicated that she does agree with the need for the officers on this initial. And uh, anything else? Okay, um, so. <laughs> Walter, you had a question. Gary, just to just to reiterate or cl and or clarify, this is a one-time approval. Yes. For May 15, subsequent events will have to come back in the same fashion with with the request. Each event, yes. Okay. And if I may, Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. question for Chief Duke. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Probably asking the obvious, but the police department has no problem being able to enforce the ordinances and requirements of this as it's being presented to us? No. Uh, we have done this several times in some of the main street closures where we enforce the sidewalk cafe. This is expanding it just a little further. There have been some, I don't want to call them problems some questions about some of those activities or activities during those events that you mentioned. Um, you don't see any problem with this particular proposal? No, but I know you have first-hand knowledge of them, so you were there. Okay. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Other questions from Council? John. Well, I would just uh, make a motion that uh, 
we uh, accept the request under the uh, circumstances that have been put in front of us and we uh, approve the resolution. I'll second that. Okay, we got a motion by John Weber, a second by Jim Bolin to uh, need to include seven to ten employees to approve the uh, or the resolution in accordance with the recommendations from the administrative committee uh, with the attached resolution. So, everybody clear on this? John, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 And I. Okay, you have your resolution. Very good. Have some fun with it.